zippity doo da zippity a. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. Plenty of sunshine heading my way. Zippity doo da zippity a. Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. Well, it's the truth, it's actual. Everything is satisfactual. Morning, zippity doo da zippity a. Wonderful feeling, wonderful. Down you go, that's it. No being that, so we won't unlock him then. Come on then, lads, go and get it. It's lovely. Eat it while it's hot, it's delicious. Hey, pull a face. Good. <laughs> Gloucester Prison was primarily built in the 1700s but was redeveloped in about 1840. So it's one of the oldest purpose built prisons in the country. Its Victorian design is what they call open galleried, which means that staff have good visibility of all the areas, very spacious and open feel to it. The sorts of prisons we'd have at Gloucester are people do us doing a couple of days for very minor offences. But we also have prisoners here who are sentenced to life we often take prisoners back into Gloucester who we may have reallocated to an open prison and they've been unsuccessful there or we may take people who've been to category C prison and have been unsuccessful there so we'll take them back for reallocation. When that bell goes off, something has happened. Either there's an officer in trouble, or there's a fight, or something. Something like that has happened. What is it, mate? It's a false alarm, so we can carry on as normal. Just put him on the table. The on. type of inmate that we have down here, and you're talking rape or um, indecent exposure, anything like that, anything of a sexual nature, then the, the inmate could well find himself being down here. The other type of inmate that would possibly be down here would be um, they owe money to somebody on, on one of the other wings. Um, he hasn't paid the money back, and he's going to find himself down here for his own protection. Um, it could be really a debt that has been inherited from outside. I mean, it could be two, three years old, this debt, and it still carries on, uh, and they don't forget. So it would be safer for the inmate involved to be down here. We've also got four inmates who are on the punishment side of the segregation unit, and they can't go down for their breakfast. They have their breakfast brought to them. Look to see if the inmate's in there. and this personally is always the safest way. Open the door carefully and then, because this is when the, the inmate will kick off, he'll either throw the food or... So the safest way is to let your mate go in first. <laughs> Thankfully the old potting is gone now, isn't it? Because they, they got toilets, but they, they used to throw the contents of their pot over you. What isn't uncommon really is the, is the old dirty protest. We've had a couple of them down here as well where they smear the cell with their, their own feces. Uh, I mean, that's not very pleasant. But we, we actually get extra pay for dealing with that, so <laughs> bring them on. <laughs> we come to beat you up. Just quick slop out, OK. Just broom out and everything. We'll get you to the phone in a minute, OK. Apart from that, you're happy, are you? Yeah. We're looking after you too well if you're happy. Yeah, no. Slop out quick uh, sweep out and everything. 
there's a point of doing this documentary when you people would only show what they what people want to see, you know? We we'll see. Do you know what I mean? I've been coming in and out of prison for 20 odd years and like they only show what people want to see, won't they? You know what I'm saying? Adjudication this morning, and it? Don't forget, don't lose your temper or anything like that. You just explain to the governor what happened, OK? Just tell the truth. You won't go far wrong if you tell the truth. The lads down here, they've been put down here. Often they're irate. They're in a... They're, they're up there, you know. They're really high... Uh, um, not on drugs, but they're high. Their tempers are high. They can be volatile. So what myself and Mr Hill tried to do is to calm them down. A couple of jokes, a bit of banter and everything, and it's easier for everybody then. <laughs> nah, he's smiling. <laughs> you want to really establish a rapport with an inmate. I'm not saying that you let them get away with everything, of course you don't. There is a line, you, you, you still establish discipline. But you do have to have a, a, a working relationship with an inmate. It makes your day easier. That's where Chris appears on the detail there, look, Laurel. Yeah. And there's myself, Hardy. I think they're trying to tell us something. <laughs> hmm, that's another fine mess you've got me into, Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Over the weekend, we had a couple of events related to healthcare. A prisoner reported to staff that he'd swallowed a razor blade. He'd previously attempted to hang himself. Um, and so obvious concerns about his safety, so he was taken to hospital. Clearly he's not coping with imprisonment, so got real concerns about him being able to be managed properly. Wow. How's, um, this morning? Yeah, the one who uh, swallowed the razor blade. He's all right. He was asking to go back to ordinary locations for yesterday, and I said, you haven't got a chance until a doctor or a psychiatrist sees you again. I just want to be sure that, um, we're not going to put him back in the situation he was before when he tried to uh, hurt himself, so... Well, no. No. And we got... Um... Back. You know, we had him back last night. Yeah, yeah. How's he coping? He... See, though, yesterday, over there, he was just... Yeah? Yeah. The book in Stanley. Okay, this morning we went in, he's, he's got his mattress on the floor, covered completely with bedding, so we're in with breakfast. Mm. So, look, I'll, I'll need to speak to you, see your face, make sure, all right? No, I mean, so I just pulled the... Th blanket back. I got a load of uh, abuse. Mm. Want to see a doctor and get some medication and he's going to burn us all in hell. We always have a number of prisoners with mental health issues. In a local prison this is quite common. We have people coming in with drug dependency and all these sorts of things which you're having to manage on a day-to-day -day basis whilst trying to run the rest of the prison as well. So it's always a demand. Morning. So then we end up covering their tasks. Okay. Nothing from the evening duty? Nothing. Okay. Uh, I was duty governor. Quiet weekend with the exception of allegedly solid a razor blade. Um, he was taken out to GRH, but there was no evidence of a blade being there. They said it's possible it has gone through his system. Um, but at this stage, he's in healthcare. Asking to go back this morning. Okay. Hold the officer, George. 323 unlock. He was uh, taken off GWOD this morning and was going to move to Avon. He was refused. He's now 53 4 pending adjudication. Thanks very much. Kerry. Uh, security told today two new staff joining, so we'll be issuing the keys to those this morning. Uh, the only thing I want to check on manage management checks, bed watch. We'll be doing that today. Okay, put your arms up. Something on it you shouldn't have. Once an inmate comes into prison, then there has got to be a laid down set of rules for him to abide by and it covers everything that a person could possibly get up to in prison. If he breaks them rules, then he's got to be adjudicated on, or he's got to be placed on report. Give me your name and number for the governor. 9309 DF. Thank you, please. We're charged the prison rule 51, paragraph 22, that is disobeys any lawful order. Specifically, that at approximately 14.30 hours on the 6th of the 2nd, 2002, in cell B206, you disobeyed an order to move to A wing. And how do you plead to the charge? Not guilty. Thank you. Is your report? The unlock this morning was fairly close to the up cap. Four to one jails <coughs> locked out over the weekend. There's very little chance of um, getting any overcrowding drafts out at the moment. We're looking at 317 uh, returns today. Monday, busy day. Good chance of being locking out tonight. Okay, thanks very much. In my out tray, George. In my desk, sorry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I can't hear you, Reverend. Sir, on the 6th of the 2nd, 02, in B206, at 1430 hours, I ordered DF9309 to go to Ailing. He refused, saying, you have to take me to the block then. That, sir, completes my evidence. What do you have to say? Uh, I have to say that um, I spoke to Miss A about, I've got enemies on uh, A1, and I spoke to her last week about it, and I was on the understanding that I was going to see one. You've done 17 prison sentences. I'm sure you've been around long enough to know that you obey the order first and then question it afterwards, not make the decision on well, your own. Yeah, but sure, I thought that, I, I thought, I didn't realise that Miss Hay hadn't took me as seriously as I thought that I put myself across in the office when I spoke to her that day. Obviously there was a breakdown in communication. I, I, I can't understand why she just, just didn't say, oh, we're leaving tucked up there in the corner yet, you know? Unless I have been a shithead or whatever, please say, you know, I don't know, what do my ring, wing reports say, I, you know? So for me to make a statement like that, it's got to be serious. And obviously, Miss A never took, or like, she, she couldn't have listened to me. And I had that feeling anyway when I was talking to her. Why? It's because I wouldn't involve names. I don't want to involve names. I'm not a grass. OK, stop there, Greg. I'm going to adjourn to speak to Mrs Hay. I'll invite Mrs Hay to attend. Uh, to hear whether she did make a decision whether you should move or not. Understand that? Okay. Adjourn for the presence of Mrs. Hay. Thank you. How long, Leslie? Only an hour or so. All home base bath suites now hammered down by up to half price. Home base. If you're not using Roundup, that perennial weed you thought was dead could come back again and again. Most weed killers only kill the leaves. Roundup kills the root. And if a weed doesn't have any roots, it can never come back. Roundup kills the root, kills the weed. I never lie about my age. My anti-aging cream does that for me. Now with a total of seven vitamins and minerals, Olay's Total Effects fights the appearance of seven signs of aging. Hey, I won't tell if you won't. Total Effects from Olay. Love the skin you're in. They're starving. What is going on here? Hey! Poor souls. Itchy, flaky dandruff still making you feel conspicuous. That's why we've developed Nizarol Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. It tackles the main cause of dandruff to stop the itch and prevent those flakes from coming back, leaving you in the spotlight for all the right reasons. Nizarol Anti-Dandruff Shampoo. At last, get confident. Big names, small prices, with up to 50% off across every room in the house, plus an extra 20% off all sale prices. Offer extended to May the 14th. The best thing about the closer bikini diet is choosing your new bikini. Lose up to a stone in six weeks and get ready for summer. Get closer now. Oh, Felix, you're not helping. I know. Oh, Felix. Because they get a delicious and different helping every time, cats like Felix find Felix pouches irresistible. Your hands are the goal. Red are the Liverpool. What a goal! Traore heads it out of the fence to Haman, who was here. Actually, no, he was more like here. Actually, he was more like here. Haman lobbed it out to Duke. Oh, offside. Play on, lads. Oh, he skins the defender with pace. Before burying it with a quality finish. So where's the goal? Watch Barclay Card Premiership goals on your mobile. In stores now. Only on three.
You can choose your friends. Tell doctors a lie. But you can't choose your inmates. Oh, I'll come back an old body bag. She's back. Oh, no. And about to wreak <laughs> havoc on G-Wing. Any of you lot comes here be again, and they'll be in big trouble. Bad Girls Returns next Thursday at 9, ITV1. Morning, Mrs. Hay. Is there a seat available? Sit down, Miss. Morning, Mrs. Hay. I'm investigating the charge against uh, a DF 9309 uh, of disobeying an order. Uh, previous inquiry into this, he indicated that he had made it clear to you that it was. Can you turn your radio off, please? That it was unsafe for him to go to A Wing. He said he wouldn't move on to A-Wing because there were soldiers on A-Wing and he would have to be a warrior if he was moved on to A-Wing. I asked him who he was talking about and explained that because prisoners moved back and forth between wings, if there was some problem with other inmates, if I didn't know who they were, then I wouldn't be able to place him easily anywhere. Yeah. Any questions you have for Mrs. Hay? Bearing in mind, I've got to write it down. Uh, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Um, yes, obviously, I, I, I will take blame. Obviously, I didn't express myself as clearly as I thought I did. So perhaps you didn't understand and take how serious the statement I made to you that day was. You know, for me to go into A-Wing, either my life will be in danger or somebody else's will. It'll be who beats who to the punch type thing. Can you remember what I said to you in the office? Can you remember what I said to you? Sit back. Sorry. Watch your tone, otherwise oh. I'll require you to direct your questioning through me. Oh, sorry, I don't okay. mean any... You've asked Mrs now. Hay a question, mm -hmm. give her the opportunity to answer that ah, question. Right. Bear in mind, I have to write this down. OK, so sorry, I apologise. I asked you who we were talking about, yeah. and you refused to tell me. Yes, that's... I'm, I'm that means... Okay, I... just, just hold on a second. Yeah, thank you, Farrell, sir. If I don't know who you're talking about, I can't check out to see if they're still here. I can't prevent them, if I think there's a problem, joining you on another wing, or indeed on B wing, yeah. and I can't actually yeah. assist at all. No. If you can't help her to help you, then there's nothing we can do about that. The issue for me, quite simply, is the charge is that you disobeyed a lawful order. My award on this occasion is seven days stoppage of earnings and seven days loss of canteen facilities. I'm going to give you the opportunity to back up what you say about wanting a quiet life. I'm going to suspend that for three months. Thank you, staff. The impression of prison before I arrived here was uh, if, if anyone's watched the film Scum of uh, things like you know, male rape, officer brutality, lots of violence within the prison. And uh, truth be known, I, did, I slept with a razor blade in my hand under my pillow for the first two weeks. I remember when I initially came in, things like the colours, it's all very drab. The smell as well, bleach, cleaning fluids, stuff like that. You know, it's like, it's like secondary school. It is frustrating at times being behind a locked door, obviously because you can't walk out of that door and go and make a cup of tea. The simplest little things, you begin to really miss uh, decent food. Things like a good cooked breakfast. It's all sorts of, a curry, for instance, or a Thai, Thai restaurant, you know. I sometimes sit in here talking to friends you know, about all the different restaurants we used to go to. It makes your mouth water, my mouth water now. <laughs> all these things, you know, that you take for granted are just taken away from you like that. I mean, it's going to be very strange going back out and suddenly having a choice of, of all these things that I can go and do or taste or experience. It's going to be a, an overload. I've spent most of my life in prison, since I was about 16 probably, roughly half my life. 
You see, when I was younger, I'd, it was the fill of stealing things, you know, people's cars, kicking doors off. It was just a fill of it. No, it's, it's a bit of a mugs game. I think it's, you know, I can't believe that I let so much of my life go by. <laughs> What's in them? When you come back to your house and someone had, you know, ransacked your house and stole your car, you'd probably want to kill the little born out of wedlock, wouldn't you? You know, you'd want to, you wouldn't want them to come to a place where, you know, they're getting three meals a day, roof over the red, having tellies in their cells, electric and all that, that you have to pay for. But yeah, you'd be thinking, no, I want a ball and chain around their feet and whip daily. That's how you'd want it to happen, wouldn't you? I certainly would. Probably not a lot of people would come to jail then, and they would be needing to build more. Okay. Who to? Who to? Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. The summer's gone, and all the flowers are dying. Tis you, tis you. I must go and I must fight. We've had some bizarre escapes from Gloucester Prison in the past. We had this guy and um, he actually got out of the prison and it was a very cold and frosty night, and sort of minus seven or minus eight. Um, he got across to the fields across from the prison and um, after about two or three hours he found that it was too cold. So he, he came and knocked back on the door, asking to be let back in again. Of course, he was most welcome. Why do you keep looking at us? Just walk around, for God's sake. It's your exercise. You must, you must fancy Mr Scott, is that right? Why have you got your hands behind your bollocks, then? We receive prisoners from three Crown Courts, Hereford, Gloucester and Worcester Crown Court, and all the magistrates' courts that serve them. On any day, we may get upwards of 20 prisoners who have been sent to prison, either as a further remand or for trial, or have been convicted. Can you come forward a little bit, please? No, just move yourself all together forward. When they come into reception, We'll check their identity, we'll check the warrant from the court which authorises their imprisonment and then we will check the documentation that we've received with the prisoner to make sure that uh, we're aware of any immediate concerns that there may be about the person for mental health needs, physical health needs, um, any number of different things. You folks when you're outside, okay? Yeah. Is there any other property that you've got on you apart from what's on here? No. Nothing at all? No. Right. One of the big issues at Gloucester Prison at the moment is the amount of people who come in with drug dependency or substance abuse problems. And so an assessment will be made of that and referral to the general practitioner who works in the prison for appropriate prescribing of medication to support their detoxification or any other health needs that they might have. Okay. Two thumbs, no, two thumbs right yeah, on there. The phones, right yeah. on, that's it. That's right, and on there. Lovely. The lad who came through just now, he uh, came from Gloucester Magistrates on a, a minor uh, offence. He could be here for a short time, but he's been uh, held on remand until the court sends for him again in a few days' time when he'll probably be sentenced. It might be a custodial, it may not be. That'll be down to the courts. Well, at the moment, we started off this morning with 323. We sent out 25 to court. A lot of those will come back. Already we've had four in, uh, and we could easily come up to what we call our cap, which is 329, plus we have to keep a couple of spaces spare for certain other prisons coming in. Uh, I'm about to phone round to uh, the various courts, and they'll tell us how many prisoners they've got and then we'll find out whether we're going to be up to a cab and then have to arrange to lock out. The lock out is when we get to our total number of beds that are filled, uh, then we can't take any more, so we have to lock them out. So they have to go off and stay at a police station overnight.
At, at times, I uh, do actually like being locked up, just to get away from everything in here. Everything about it is quite full on, and it's just nice to remove yourself from that. When that door is shut, I'm in my own world, you know, from 8 o'clock at night to 8 in the morning, you're left to your own devices, in yourself. Come on then, lads, let's have you. I want to go home to a proper dinner. <laughs> there are a few officers in here that you can, you can be quite pally with, but there, there comes a point at which have you done? they are prison officers. Yeah, but at the end no of the day, he's locking you away. Do you know I mean? He's banging you up behind the door. Could you do that? Bo! What's green and annoying? <laughs> You sign, because then if there's any mess up, you get into trouble, I don't. That's right. Right, have we done, Chris? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, that's it. That's another one done. Right, let's go. Whew. I've got a bad day, was that? No, not bad at all. Who is going to get you down there? I've been working down here, right, for. On this landed now, coming up for three years now, and in that three years, I have never had an inmate assaulted. Good, good behaviour. <laughs> I'm not coming back here anymore. Banged up next tonight on ITV1. Good evening. You're watching ITV1 for the West of England. He's a short-term prisoner who's just done lots of prison sentences. He knows the prison routine very well. As the population of the prison started to increase, we were going to have to put him in a cell that he shared with someone else. At this point, he became problematic. He wasn't prepared to share, um, made a number of threats against other prisoners and staff if he was made to share. And so we had no option then but to isolate him in the segregation unit. Ultimately, he chose to go on dirty protest. We're just about to feed him his lunch, and having to do that, we're going to have to wear protective clothing because obviously he's got a lot of feces all over the cell. Um, so when we got him, we've got to protect ourselves just in case he, we get him contaminated. Sure. The difficulty is how do you make the judgment between his own personal safety and his own personal health? and the health and safety of the staff that have to deal with him. Medical assessment at the moment is that he's OK, but we'll obviously keep that under review. So you don't want to enter protest, then? Huh? You don't want to enter protest? No. Right, OK, we'll see you after lunch, yeah? Right, I'll see you after lunch. But we've made the decision that as long as he remains on his protest and he's not prepared to clean up his cell himself, that he will remain in that own cell. In the longer term, what we would do with somebody who's on dirty protest is consider whether we should actually transfer him to another prison. But in this prisoner's case, he's being discharged tomorrow, which makes the, the whole issue even more hard to understand. Why would somebody who's going home tomorrow be acting in this way? There may be some mental health issues, although we don't believe that's the case. We just think he's been a particularly difficult prisoner. I'd seen an advert in the national paper and I thought, well, I could do that. 
And I used to be a policewoman in Liverpool years ago, so I thought I had the right qualifications. And I was in in six months training. So what are we filming today? This is your life. Where's the book then? It's here, Terry. This is my life? My life. Our lives? Together. All right, my darling. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right. I'm not everyone's idea as a prison officer because of probably the hair and the makeup, but that's me. I like the job and I don't alter what I am to do the job. You go ladies, first. Ladies before Thanks. gentlemen. I'm, I'm an officer in oh, here, sorry. Terry. Thanks all the same. I did get a lot of hassle, but then I, I just established myself and I didn't change. Years ago, the officers had been here for many years and they were loath to accept uh, new officers as they came in. This is what I found here at Gloucester. They weren't prepared to help you then, whereas now the officers here, they all help each other. It's totally different. Well, you did say here. you was a prostitute on the landing. Did I, Terry? You did. All right, You're then. not a prostitute, no, are you? No, I'm an officer. But why did you say you were a prostitute? I don't know, Terry. No, perhaps you wouldn't have waited for me. No, perhaps not. Shall, you... I see, shall I see you later? Well, you're not a prostitute, are you? No, I'm a prostitute. Thank officer. God for that. All right. Bye bye, then. Bye bye. Work, lads. Work, lads. Seven months, I've Started off at 16 years old, licking the crack, committing ice burglars, you know, destroying people's lives, basically. It started off at £150 a day, habit. I just moved on. You know, I was getting some more serious into trouble, like committing armed robberies, you know, needing more money. Even went up to like six hundred pound a day habit. You know, I went as low as nicking my little brother's mobile phone. And I saw off my mum and dad. You know, and that's when, you know, I decided I had enough, and I decided to hang myself. It was on a Sunday, normal day. I was in the cell with my mate there. There was no sign of him being depressed. He was a bit quieter than normal, but. And also, he was giving out things. Looking back now, it might have been his way of saying, you know, I, I don't need that sort of thing. Got a pillowcase, made it into a loose. I was stood on the dustbin. Have we got dustbins in there? Dustbin. And then just kicked the dustbin away. But thankfully, when he kicked the bin, it hit my bed, which then immediately woke me up. So I just woke up as normal. I thought something was funny going on, because I lifted the blanket up, I looked at the telly at first, then I looked up there and I saw my soulmate hanging. And obviously, as you can imagine, it was quite a shock, to say the least. So I jumped out of my bed, I grabbed him around the waist, I lifted him up. And at the time, I tried to put his legs on the toilet, so then I dashed straight over to the bell, I pushed the bell then, ran back, and by the time I got back, Paul Lamb was just limp there, hanging there. The officers came straight in, grabbed the pair of us, lifted us both up, and they cut the rope, what he made with the blanket, and uh, we got him into a wheelchair, and the nurse revived him and gave him oxygen. And thankfully he's back home now, you know, he's okay, so... But yeah, it was a horrible, horrible thing to see. Luckily, with young Ben, the officers got there in time, and um, a, a, a disaster was averted. And believe you me, when, when we do lose one, the whole prison feels it. It makes you feel that it's such a, a waste of life and it is not very nice at all. And the less we have, the better. He was immediately put on the self-harm register. He'll be on that until staff deem it necessary that, that he can come off. Christian name? D. D. Prison number? DF six three no, no nine three six zero. Nine three six zero. What other previous establishments have you been in? Exeter, Guys, Mars, uh, Portland. Oh, that's in there. <laughs> Where are you from? 
Tiverton in Devon. Oh, right. So what are you doing up here? I was just up here on it. You just got caught up here? Yeah. Oh, right. You're really sweating, aren't you? Do you want a tissue or something? No, I'm fine. When they come in from the courts, they come straight on to B-Wing or healthcare, depending on the situation. And we have an induction package where first thing in the morning they're seen by the doctor. Uh, we have an induction video. And then we try, if we can, do the induction package in the morning. You also have TVs in your cell, yeah. OK? That costs you 50p a week if you're sharing with somebody. Okay. If you're in a single cell, which you won't be because we're full at the moment, it costs you a pound. Is there anything you want to ask me? No, I'm just okay, Anything you need to know? No, I'm no. OK. All yeah. right, Thank you very much. Out. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. At the moment, on these two landings, we've got 87 inmates. We've only got a couple of spaces, so that's why we're jiggling around and getting rid of some inmates over to A-Wing, because they've only got three spaces over there, so we have to get rid of three over there. Excuse me! Do us a favour. Put your way. That's twice now. Sorry, Max, I just told him. Carry on, I'll do it for you. <coughs> Yeah, everything's ready. Come on, Barry. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Get yourself right, I'll tell you what I want to do. I was going to shit down in the recess so the cleaners are up, but I'll, I'll have to shit Come in on, don't be silly. Oh, I want to shit. Where are you going to do it? Oh, do you want to do it in here or do it down there? Yeah, where are you going to do it? On the floor? Yeah, I'll do it on the floor. So you better shut the door for a minute, innit? You know that one, Why can't you use the toilet then? Because I haven't used the toilet since I've been here. You know that? I know. Oh, I, I, I had an idea. Did you know on the wing it was all full of shit bars? I had an idea that it was. Uh... But I told him. And I told them when I came to the right. Listen, they brought to you that. I'm shutting the door. Use the toilet. Yeah, right, right. yeah. Yeah, and I roll it back, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm always going to take all day. Mm -hmm. Well, it's better than my state anyway, haven't they? You go to the toilet, did you? Yeah. You used the toilet? No. It's sad, isn't it? It is sad, I'm afraid. You're telling me that lad there mentally ill? Yeah. He's lived in that for... Oh. He shouldn't be in prison. No, he shouldn't be, should he? He shouldn't be in prison. Mm -hmm. You can see the hole there roughly about three inches deep by two inches wide. Really speaking, it, it, it's, he's wasting his time doing that. This is just an inner, basically a, a, a security bar really. Uh, he'd have got through that, he could have lifted that out after a few days I should imagine. Then on the other side he's got another set of bars to get through. They actually go well into the walls so you can't actually burrow around them either. So, uh, I mean, with the implement he had, uh, it, uh, he could have been here three, four months and he'd still be at it. I think he's just sort of playing us about a bit to, so that we, we ship him off to another prison. I, I, my, my own personal views is that um, he, he owes a lot of money or he's in debt or people here want him. I, I, that, that's my views. Uh, and he will do anything to get out of this prison. Who is going to get you down here? I've been working down here, right, for, on this landing now, coming up for three years now, and in that three years, I have never had an inmate assaulted. Never. Touch wood. Once a, an inmate has tried to escape, we put him in a special cell, a knee-list cell. Um, we, we then put him in a special tracksuit so that um, he will stand out in any crowd. Life becomes quite uncomfortable for him. Four weeks, right, maximum. Once you get sentenced, right, me and Mr. Jeffries will ship you on, depending on the severity of your sentence, right, me and Mr. Jeffries, we will shift you on to whatever prison, I'm not going to say whatever prison you want, but whatever prison 
we deem is the best for you, i.e. for your needs. Okay. Now, that is four weeks, Ben. Nothing you say or do in the interim period is going to change that. That is prison fact. It's you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello? Sometime today? Sorry, mate. Just trying to sort me loud now. My bank has outsourced branch telephony systems into a dedicated call centre. Result? I'm now talking to Vivaldi. Can you play for Chelsea? My bank processes all customer inquiries via an automated voice facility. Nine. Look, talking to robots, man. All this faffing around just to get through to me branch. Good job there's another one. See? It's not brain surgery. Even though business is in uncertain times, you can still guarantee. When you leave the document to the last minute... Where are the figures? Where's last year's figures? Oh, sorry. In the forecast. Uh, the fact. Oh, yeah. Janet! Janet! Have you got the charts? They're here. And you can also be certain with BT Business Plan, you'll get round-the-clock service support and most UK fixed-line calls will cost no more than 10p. <laughs> to sign up, call 0800 333 300. is a major cause of gum disease. Fortunately, Listerine can reduce the buildup of plaque by half compared to brushing alone. Great news for everybody, except dentists. Listerine, bad for bacteria, good for gums. Remember, lives. One long cat walk. thousand pounds to be won every day at gala bingo everything else can wait the flymo vision compact squishes and squashes the grass so you emptied less clever hover every day royal mail helps the financial services industry reach millions of customers Every day, our special delivery service guarantees valuable packets arrive quickly and safely. Every day, we deliver over 80 million items for the UK's top businesses. We are the real network, and we make business work. Like rodents in a lab, we strive for a place in the rat race. But a new wave of work ethic is upon us. Let the disruption begin. Has anyone seen my pen? A fantastic holiday is yours, if you avoid the sack. Are you a lab rat or an office monkey? Tuesday, 10.30 on ITV2. the day after he'd made this very serious attempt to hang himself and was made aware then of his very, very extreme cocaine habit, which was just running wild prior to him coming in, and that he found himself in such a desperate situation. He ruined so many people's lives, as he put it, and was slowly killing himself, that uh, the only way out was to come in here to try to dry out, if you like. 
Well, if you never get those again... He'd also acquired quite a few enemies outside, and so even coming in here, there was no escape. <laughs> It's a difficult one, isn't it? Yeah, Knowing that definitely. you're probably going to get quite a sentence, mm. but um, you're sounding you're sounding a lot more positive and together. Yeah, nice and tough. At the moment, definitely. It's a question of waiting. I mean, I believe the psychiatrists have done their reports. Uh, the probation service has yet to do their report. He's due in Crown Court <coughs> in a couple of weeks' time for sentence, and it will depend on the way those reports are received by the judge as to what happens to him. You're looking after him, aren't you? Amazingly different to when you first came in, you know. Well, you have, haven't you? You're getting it together. You know, you, you, you've, you've accepted all the things that we've told you. You know, he, like I said, he knows he ain't well, going anywhere. Hopefully, before too long, <coughs> we'll be out of this lot. Yeah. Laughing gear. Yeah, I, should, I shouldn't yeah. see why not. No. I shouldn't see why not. No. Ben's still on the uh, self-harm register. We've got a review meeting this afternoon, and uh, there'll be a discussion on all the, all the self-harm registers uh, to see how they're doing. Um, Ben, personally, I think he's doing pretty good. Um, we should be able to remove him this afternoon. This is where things change now. You stop talking and you listen to me. Give me your full name and prison number. <coughs> EB67. EB? Yeah. No, you do know it. What's your full name? 6797. Seven, Good lad. Date of birth without reading it. Don't. Hey. 28th of Sit back in your chair. Right. Let they spoke my name off. And what address were you before you were arrested? Uh, what's I got there? What's the main addresses? Can I have a look at your right forearm? You've got some scars on there? Yeah. Did it well there, didn't you? Point to your left and you picked up your right. I'm impressed. See, you'd have me on, didn't you? You pointed at me fucking Yeah, down. come on. Good lad. Right. This is for you now. That's your licence. That's your copy. Keep that with you at all times, OK? Please, yeah. please pick it up. It tells them why you're discharged from prison and that you're under supervision. Yeah. That's for the Social Security, OK? Yeah. And Mr Jeffries has got your discharge grant. Right, so what I want you to do now, put those somewhere safe. Put them in that bag, perhaps, with all your property, OK? And then follow Mr Jeffries to the gate where you'll be released. The meeting is a, a weekly review meeting of uh, people that we are monitoring in, in terms of self-harm or suicidal intent, just to check how they're progressing, see if we can improve their support plans. We've got Ben here, been on the register since the 22nd of the 3rd. We always have somebody from the, the, the wings, hopefully someone who will actually know the uh, prisoners who are being reviewed. We have a member of the probation team, the uh, same one usually comes uh, regularly. We have somebody from our drug support, uh, well it's a substance abuse team, a member of the chaplaincy, um, and somebody from healthcare as well of course. I mean, he's far more able to uh, to think for himself. He's far more motivated. He's far more positive than he was. I'm not yeah. saying that he yeah, didn't yeah, have yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, sort of very negative and, and uh, destructive thoughts that, that uh, he talked to you, to you about and, and, and to me. But uh, he's getting there. He's going in the right yeah. direction. It's a safety device. It's to make sure that we're all aware that a person yeah. is having some problems um, and needing additional support. Obviously, our aim is is to keep people alive and as well as as may be. Um, being in, in custody is very stressful. Quite often people will have a bad patch, um, need a bit of support to come through it. Happily, most people do. Uh, things are a lot clearer in his mind of what's happening now. I, I, I recommend he can come off. Thank you. I would disagree. I think we should leave him on. Yeah. I think he's too unpredictable. Yeah. His, his problems are very cyclic. Uh, that the way he phases. He will show great determination to, to keep himself well, and then very quickly, Things will mm. clear his mind from his past. I saw him on uh, on Monday, and he said he was all right, but he still has thoughts of when he was hanging himself. So I think I'm picking up that the um, general view is he needs to stay on at least another week.
I haven't been released from here on Wednesday. I've spent a great deal of time in here, but I'm not coming back here anymore. I'm on medication, see? But I don't understand what this medication does to me. It's tranquilizers. Well, I, I, I've got a council flat to go to, but I can't make up my own mind. Sometimes when I'm outside, I feel happier in here because of all the traffic whizzing round. And it's just everything seems to be whizzing round. He said if I wouldn't have pleaded guilty, he said I would have given you um, seven years for the robbery and six years for the burglary, which totaled up to 13 years. But he said because I pleaded guilty, he said I'm going to give you four years for the burglary and uh, five years for the robbery. Sentence expiry date, 20, 25th of the second. You get out, you get out the months before me, Ben. But I, I might get out before that with good behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> How many days are 3,330. <laughs> well, it's 3,331 now, isn't it? Because yeah. I was printed two days ago. Just think how many Olympic Games you can watch inside. What was on my mind is my mum, and my mum would feel, at the end of the day, you know, I've, basically I'm institutionalised. And like, I've just finished a four year, come out in June, and I'm back in in January, and I've just got nine years now, so I'm just used to it now. All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. I hate to wake you up and say goodbye. <laughs> but the dawn is breaking, it's early morning. Are we all packed, Ben? You're not. Is this the real life? Yes. Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide? I'm just a poor boy, I need no sympathy, because I'm easy come, easy go, little high, little low, any way the wind blows, doesn't really matter to me, to me. <laughs> How long are you doing? Nine. Same as me and Is it? Yeah, what's it going for? Oh, I'm robbery, it's not. Have you heard about that? It's alright. Yeah, it's a good deal, Malcolm. Stitch at my but it's a good deal. That's alright, yeah. Good. It's better than um, Long Martin. Is it? Long Martin's full of nonces, mm. rapists. I don't think he was that disappointed that he got as long as he did this time. No, because it's all, it's, it's all credibility for him, isn't it? It's street cred, that's all that is. Yeah, no. Good birthday tomorrow. Is it? 34. Uh, 40, what time am I going to end? 30. It'll be 30. I'm only 23, so it'll oh, be yeah. 30. OK. You've been transferred just this morning to yeah. HMP Garth. You knew where you were going beforehand, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Uh, you've had your breakfast this morning? Sorry. Yeah. Got your clothing back on yeah. and you've actually seen all your property and the staff have explained what's happening with regards to property cash etc. Yeah. 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 Young Ben, he's uh, been coming into prison since he was 15 and I think he actually enjoys prison. At the moment he really enjoys prison. He feels secure in prison because it's all he knows. I even bring my own foil into the prison because the foil that you get from the canteen isn't of very good quality, so you waste half the heroin doing it. And that's, uh, I just see if I've got some on the windowsill, but I'm not sure because I was having a boot not long ago.
custard. That was my favourite at school, that was. They remembered my birthday on Friday. <laughs> and how old am I on Friday, Freddy? 44, did I get it? 44, it gets better and better. <laughs> Don't forget me card. <laughs> go on in, lads. And you got home to go to? <laughs> What's that for? Oh, it's for Millie, is it, young yeah, L? He got out, didn't he? He got bailed. He oh, look, listen to this. Say hello to Mr. Scott and Mr. Hill for me, and tell Mr. Hill that Mr. Scott looks a lot younger than you. <laughs> good and groovy, good and. See ya. <laughs> yeah, we get, get a few of them from uh, satisfied customers. This is the C4 landing. All the inmates are all on the drug rehab unit. So it's a normal occurrence that I could come up here in the day when there are no inmates about. And we can do a, a drug search with the drug dog Bruce there then. All the cell doors have been opened and we just go around there, put the drug dog around and see if we get any indications off any of these cells. Cannabis was a favourite a few years ago, but the heroin's certainly taken over from that. Um, it's anything really that, that keeps them, that, that sort of makes the day go a bit quicker, that makes them very mellow. People don't want to party, they want to sort of get their head down in prison. Hey, big enough for me. <laughs> When I first ever come to Gloucester Prison, it was full of my mates and all my friends, and to me it looked like a playground. I was a rebel, really, a young rebel, and it's, I wasn't really into the drugs that bad then. I was just smoking pot. This is where I first got ever introduced to heroin. I've never even heard, I've heard of it. I've known about people who bang up, inject at like them. To me, they were dirty bastards, excuse my French, but dirty. And, um, but when I come in here and I actually done it on the sixes, I felt a glow, a flow around me, you know, and it felt great. What we've got in here is only a reflection of what's happening in society. They're no different, these people haven't got two heads or three eyes, you know, they're only people that have broken the law that have come off the streets into us, and they have big drug problems. If somebody comes into prison with a, with a big habit, you're talking maybe sort of over £100 a day on heroin at the moment. They cannot keep that habit going within prison because there isn't that quality of drugs available. You know, everybody's a fool to say there are no drugs in Gloucester prison. Of course, there are, there are drugs in every prison in the country. But there isn't enough to keep that habit going, nowhere near enough. Prison is one of the best drug rehabs that you can come across because they are actually, you know, they're a confined audience. They're not going anywhere. And, of course, there is a, a comprehensive treatment programme going here at the moment with, with the drug rehab. <laughs> I went down to Chinesewood Prison, and that's when I first started taking drugs. It was in 1988 in Chinesewood Prison, which was just dope. I found it all right. Like, you know, it was, I was about 26, 27 years old when I first had my first joint. When I got out, then I continued to take dope. And then I got into, I started taking speed. I've been on heroin since what, 94. I'd buy more than I needed for myself, and like, I'd buy a, a certain amount and. Other people could want some, so I'd sell a bit off that. So then I was having mine for nothing. Like. I'm taking part in this rehab course here now, and it's, it seems to be all right. But the only thing that worries me is uh, doing the rehab here, and then if there's no follow up support after. It's easy enough to clean up in prison, but then when you get out to the real world and it's all about you, that's what the strength is needed. This time in this way, I find it easier for me because this wing is a drug-free wing anyway. So it, like, it's the main location of gay wing in this prison. Yeah, there's, there's drugs in prisons, there's drugs in all prisons, let's be fair. There's not so much on this wing. I get that one. There, the sticks, right? Yeah. I didn't say a word. Into this little office and we'll have a talk in here, all right? Because you put in an application. You're back on closed visits. Yeah. 
Now, what's your problem about that? Well, it's put me back on close visits for suspicion that in the future I might bring drugs into this jail. Right. When, you know, but you have had them in in the past. Yeah, but I've been back on close. I've been back on open visits since then. For how long? We're a totally independent body within the prison. We're a public watchdog in the prison, and there's no partiality whatsoever. So, if member of staff wants to have a word, then we would stop and listen. Prisoners want a word with us so we could talk to them. Sometimes we can sort out their problems, otherwise we just refer them to the right channel. But you do know that it is a prime objective in the prison not to have drugs. I mean, you're aware of Yeah, situation. I know, but they can't turn around and say, right, I'm putting you on closed visits because suspicion in the future you might bring drugs into this jail. Well, they can do. It's not, I'm not putting on closed visits for suspicion of bringing mm. drugs in. They, they can There's do. There's been no dog indication, no nothing. Well, there was. Well, there wasn't. Yes, there, was. there wasn't. The passive dog. The um, dog has never indicated any of my visitors ever. Well, I would suggest that you go on negotiating with the governor about it. If you're going out on Tuesday, then there's very little problem. Plenty of heroin in this jail. More heroin in this jail than any jail I've ever been in. It comes over the wall into the exercise yard. I get mine in books sent through the post. Yeah, what my friends do is they'll pick a book that's embossed slightly like this. So you can see the dent in there. They'll fill that up with heroin for me. Then they'll glue round the first page, stick that page to it, put a weight on it so it's nice and flat post a book into one of my friends. I'll go and retrieve the book, give him a little something for sorting it out, and then that's me all right for the rest of the week. Um, but I would suggest that you continue speaking to the governor or to the wing officer about it. And you can ask him if when you come back in you think you might be on closed visit again, because I can't give you the answer to that. Whose decision is it? Security? Because I've been accused of it in security ask, and everything, ask, haven't I? Speak to the governor. Oh, yeah, no, that's I mean, as much as I can tell you at the moment. Is. You know, he accused well, me of sparking him and everything, didn't he? Yeah, well, you... I even bring my own foil into the prison because the foil that you get from the canteen isn't of very good quality, so you waste half your heroin doing it. And that's, uh, I'll just see if I've got some on the windowsill, but I'm not sure because I was having a boot not long ago. They should have a wing for people that take drugs to be on so that the drugs ain't in the whole prison. It is, it's a waste of time having a drug-free wing because people on the drug-free wing ain't drug-free. You have to say to everyone, right, if you want to take drugs, you go on that wing there, you're isolated and you don't get no piss tests. It's the piss tests that turned everyone to heroin. I originally got on heroin in prison, you know, because at the end of the day, if you smoke a spliff, it's stored in your body fat, so it lasts there for 28 days. If you smoke heroin, you can flush it out in eight hours, not 72 hours, eight hours you can flush heroin out in, as long as you drink enough. Every single person that comes into jail, if he's put in a cell with someone that takes heroin, he will leave that jail and become an heroin addict. DF9260. Thank you. 60. From the side of that one. But you're hanging on there. Okay. Well, I'll go through the test and I'll explain to you as it development. Okay, you want me on anything? No, no. Heroin, cannabis, and cocaine. What we're looking for is two lines in each. All right? When we've got two lines in each window, then it's a negative. <coughs> two lines on each? Well, right? you're praying there's two lines on each. I can see them. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, then. Got a negative, a negative, and a negative. Well done. I'm off to see Pete now. He's been here for two and a half years. He's got parole hearing coming up shortly, and he feels that by moving to a different prison that it's going to affect his parole hearing, in that, that he feels that the staff won't know him well enough to advise him or to um, write his parole reports. That's not necessarily the case, but I'm going to advise him on that. Uh, hopefully that should allay some of his fears. I'm in here on drugs offences, quite serious drugs offences. The sentence I was given was five years. I was expecting eight, 
so it's a very nice sentence, really. Quite a surprise, nice surprise. On a five, you have to... Well, you're eligible for parole at two and a half years, um, which falls this November. That'll be my two and a half year point. It, it's not taken lightly, you know, it, it will be a big thing. It has to be said that a, a lot of prisons, like your training prisons, are more geared up for that, mm. um, for, for, with parole in, in view. Mm. But, I mean, it, yes, it can be done here. Yeah. If I move from this prison to another prison, with it being such a short time till parole, I might not get to know the officers at the other prison very well. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, my, my statements or references or where, you know, documents yeah. concerning parole might not be as good as here. Yeah, it, normally it doesn't really take an awful long time for an officer to get to know an inmate, does it? But bearing in yeah. mind that all your reports, your wing file, will go from, from here with you. But that's actually so, your parole November, fingers crossed, right? out for Christmas. When you go out on if I don't get parole, then I'm released, as long as I don't do anything in here, uh, next September. The decision on whether you stay here or whether you want to go somewhere else, a training prison or somewhere like that, I mean, really, a short decision. Hi, two ice lollies, please. ATP, mate. You are going to throw in a nice big cornet, aren't you? Go on. With some of those hundreds and thousands. Don't forget, not all deals are as generous as Citroen Saxo from 5795, including £1,000 cashback. The C3 from 7495, including £1,000 cashback. Or the Zara Picasso from 10995, including £2,600 cashback and free air conditioning. How about playing the music for a bit, then? Citroen. Deals to remember. It's easy to let the freshness of spring into your house, but not so easy to freshen your fabrics. New Febreze safely removes odours from fabrics and is now spray for spray fresher than ever. Filling your whole house with springtime freshness. Hey! New Febreze, fresher than ever. New from miracle Grow, Shake and Feed Slow Release Plant Food feeds plants for up to three months. Brilliant! Make your own miracles. Some insurance companies don't want to insure me. There's a company that only wants good drivers. They don't want you to pay for my repairs. The company's insure. They could save you up to 30%. You went into the back of my new car. Calm down, dear. Well, it's a commercial. Uh, I'm really a very good driver. That's why I'm with Esure. Hello, Mum. I'm on the telly. Buy online now at Esure.com. Thinning hair? Discover the shampoo proven to give men thicker hair. New L'Oreal LV for men with Regenium XY. L'Oreal has invented a unique formula that thickens hair for better scalp coverage. New LV for men thickening shampoo because you're worth it. Need a plumber? Or do you just want that blockage shifted fast? New Harpic Power Jet with its hydraulic action does it in three seconds flat. New Harpic Power Jet. You might find it's quicker than a plumber. Right, I think that's about it. Unless anyone has anything else they want to say. Uh, Victoria, do you want to? Yes, I think we deserve a bit of a shakedown. Everyone would like to stand up? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. See you next month. Bye-bye. <laughs> Discover the power of the last Rolo. <laughs> Wickedly tempting. So, what you've got to ask yourself, weed, is did I finish this dispenser last week, or is there a wee bit left in the bottle? Because to be honest with you, weed, and all the excitement, I kind of forgot myself. Weed all kills weeds fast. Hello, Vera. All the kindness of Purcell Aloe Vera, now in a liquid.
a drop of nature, a wash with kindness. United they stood. You're not going to part us, we're going together. Divided they fell. I need to go. Now the celebrities are reunited back home after their bush adventure. Oh, get me out of here, I'm a celebrity. Oh. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, reunion. Wednesday at 9, ITV1. Uh, we're on our way to uh, an alarm bell incident. We've had two alarm bells in the last five minutes, both of them on A-Wing. One relief, please. OK, three coming. Okay, One, two, three. Hang on, two. Ken's in charge at Don't stick that on. Get that fucking camera off. Don't turn it off. It looks like a member of staff was assaulted by one of the inmates, I don't even know, like, know what his name was. Um, staff intervened and controlled and restrained me. It was quite a difficult one as well because he was tucked right in the corner. Of course, you've got sort of one inmate, three, four staff, sort of tucked in that corner. It's quite difficult. Yeah, the injury staff. Okay. Can we get, you got your, you got your four, can we get some staff away? Okay, hey, hey, let's get some staff away. If you got your four, I'll wait. We've had two bells on here. Right. One on A3 and one on A1. Two prisoners have been involved in this. What, in the last few minutes? Yeah. Still, uh, four prisoners I know of which just got friction against staff. Yeah. Staff on Awen. I think it's going to be a bit of a control and office staff. Okay. Just and they've still got exercise to come as well. Yeah. So we need to just get a feel for. Um, it's still bubbling on there. Yeah. We're going to unlock at quarter to two. Given the lunch times events, I want that to be a fairly sort of tight controlled unlock, particularly on A-wing. Keep your ears to the ground. If you're picking up anything, say step back from it. Let's look at it and decide what we're going to do. Let's just get through the afternoon to keep the jail steady. Your arm out your t-shirt. Let your back bones slip. There we go. Yeah, ma'am, that's you done. See you tomorrow. Right, I'm Dr. Jones. Today we're going to do the um, hepatitis A vaccines. Hepatitis A is a liver disease, very similar to hepatitis B. If you've had the hepatitis A vaccine before, you don't need it now. If you've had the Hep B ones, you'd be just as well to have this as well, because it's a completely separate thing. Um, it's potentially very serious, so I recommend that you Thank have you. it. Come to Miss... Uh, come. What we're going to do is a mass vaccination against Hepatitis A. We've highlighted in the last week or so that we've had two confirmed cases of Hepatitis A where inmates, and that actually constitutes an outbreak. Hand on your hip. Like you usually uh, stand. Well, try this arm. You know the one. What are you trying? Put your hand on your hip. Oh, I put my hand on it. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Bless him. Best, best not me. Best not. I want blood on my t-shirt. Best you sue me. Oh, just a bit of fun. I want blood on my t-shirt, man. Seventy quid t-shirt, this. They nicked it. They all are. Right. <laughs> it is caused through close, prolonged contact. 
some poor standards of hygiene and also sharing drug paraphernalia. With the client group that we have got in a prison, they do share facilities and unfortunately that is sometimes, you know, a good breeding ground for the, this type of virus. Put your hand on your hip, this hand on hip, like this, let your top arm go. In the end it will actually cost thousands of pounds. Initially we should be delivering 300 vaccinations a day at 20 pounds a time and then we shall be vaccinating all inmates on reception for at least the next six weeks or until the outbreak is, is contained. One of the inmates uh, had to be restrained earlier on uh, because there was a scuffle between one of the officers and the inmate. So I had to go and fill what is called a 213. Uh, this is a form that's filled out whenever there's an injury to an inmate, either accidentally or in a, in a fight. There was no history of any previous violence. Uh, it may be that uh, some issue has come to light and it has now escalated to such a state that he is now very aggressive. Usually after a couple of hours uh, in isolation, they calm down and then they are perhaps more approachable. Right now, he didn't even want to see me. He, uh, he felt that I was part of the system colluding against him. I can see his point of view. Generally, prisoners do find themselves escalating their anger until they are put in a segregated unit where they have a little bit of time to reflect and they generally calm down. Well, what we're going to do now, fellas, is the drug dogs be running search your cell this morning. We've got a slight indication in your cell there might have been a controlled substance in there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave, get another officer down here now, and I'm going to leave one of you outside with this officer. I'm going to go in, I'm going to give you a strip search, both of you, yeah? yeah. And then we're going to, you're going to come out, you'll be locked in a separate cell, and then me and this officer is going to search your cell properly, okay? All over the place. Right, take him with you now. You try not to rip everything apart like you did last time? Because last time I was coming here, I thought I was beardled. What, me? No, the last time we got, I, oh, I, I no, had to spend, everything just ripped everywhere, I got all my kids' photos and things. See? I'm not like that. There's nothing stuck on the back wall, have you? No. I want to keep these posters in a bit, really. So then it should be on a picture board size, really. We haven't got one. I know, but you know what I mean? If you imagine one was there, like... Uh, yeah, Remember the end of the tables? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that would just go berserk. Have you got a That? Yeah. Outside water wants to come off. I'll take that off anyway. Yeah. So that, open. That's it, lovely. Arms up, mate. That's it, turn around. Right, so that. Okay. to the rehab on a Thursday morning. Uh, whilst we were in rehab on a Thursday morning, apparently they brought the drug, the, the drug dogs on the wing and uh, there was a strong scent in certain cells. What I've been told now with the dogs give a bit of an indication in my cell. They said because of the dogs, I've done that. They took me off rehab. I've had to have an MDT, a mandatory drug test, which was sent away to a lab laboratory to be tested. And uh, when that comes back, then they said they'd give me a certificate to say I finished the rehab. So I had the MDT yesterday. I'm waiting for the results on it now. You've got choices at the end of the day, haven't you? It's my choice. If I want drugs, I'll take drugs. If I don't, I won't. So I mean, that's my choice not to. Because I, mean, I know uh, if I took drugs now, I'd, I'd be off, be put off this wing, onto a wing, and I'd soon be on the transfer list over here. If I'm on the transfer list out here, that's my visit going to my son and stuff. So I've got a lot of those. Um, too much to those, just for the joint. Hello, me old mate. Brought your certificate. And it's a negative again for you. Thank you. I was given 12 hours notice. Some staff came and collected me from the workshop I was working in on the Wednesday afternoon and told me I was going Thursday morning. 
I thought it was a joke, to be honest. Uh, I thought they were winding me up, pulling my leg, because I have done that before. The explanation that I was given uh, for my being moved here was the fact that um, at the moment the prison population is at very high levels and uh, they're crying out for the spaces. I had very little time to do anything really about anything. Basically I phoned my girlfriend and my family and uh, told them that I was being moved to Parkers and obviously they, they were upset and a bit surprised. I did feel very betrayed or let down by Gloucester. I just didn't see how being moved to a high security B category prison marks on my family is going to help in my rehabilitation. If anything, um, I, I would say that putting, training people like that, it, it, it breeds resentment. I am very concerned about my parole. I'm just not very confident about it because I'm here in Parkhurst because it's the first time through the system. I don't really know anything about parole. I don't really know how the system works. It's not been explained to me. I, I've asked, I've asked to have a sentence plan done and uh, the answer I keep getting is, oh, don't worry, it will be done in a, in a week or two. Uh, a week or two comes and it's not done, I ask again, get the same answer. So, um, God knows what's gonna happen. <laughs>felt at that stage that uh, we would probably move beyond the negotiating stage where they would surrender to requiring to intervene. Identification may be difficult. During the early evening, I received the call from the deputy governor who had been informed that there was an incident in the establishment. A group of prisoners returning from uh, uh, evening association had uh, gone into one prisoner's cell, uh, locked themselves in, barricaded them in, stating that um, uh, they wouldn't be coming out unless a prisoner who was located in the segregation unit was seen by them and returned to his normal location on the wing. As soon as any more than two prisoners refuse to leave a cell in that, under those circumstances, it becomes a serious incident and must be managed in a particular way. There are obvious implications if you have seven prisoners locked in a cell and then you just open the door and let them all out. The potential for violence from seven people and the potential for the incident to escalate and um, spread is an obvious one. My main concerns were, am I dealing with a barricade or am I dealing with a hostage? Indications were that it was a barricade, but until I can satisfy myself that all seven prisoners are in there of their own, of their own free will, then I have to make the consideration that it is a hostage. The procedures are that we would automatically put into place contingency plans which are fairly well established throughout the service for dealing with these sorts of things. The first thing you do is try and negotiate with the prisoners so that they would come out peacefully and uh, without the need to use any form of intervention or force. They both said there'd be uh, teams here, lads. They're just here in case anything goes wrong, right? Right, yeah. right? The area manager offered support by way of uh, mutual response units, tornado units from other establishments, and because the possibility of a protracted negotiation, I felt that I required more hostage negotiator backup. Nothing's, no, they're not here for any other reason in case emergency happens. You've got, you've got 
You've got more assurance on that. These people, you know the... No, I'm not on about them. I'm on yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Negotiation strategy is done basically to transfer the balance of power from where the perceived perpetrator is holding it to the negotiator. So by effective negotiations, the perpetrator becomes reliant on the negotiator. Because three prisoners wanted to surrender, we obviously had to make sure that they surrendered at a pace that was acceptable to us. Right, we're just going to get you out, lads. Remember, the door's going to open. We want one out at a time only. OK? Just wait till you're called for to come out. The chain on the door was placed there to only allow the door to open sufficiently for one person to come out at a time. So, for example, if the other prisoners inside felt that once the door was open, they could rush the negotiator or somebody there and take a member of staff hostage. We had to ensure that that wouldn't happen. First one. Two <laughs> Three surrendered, as we expected. And then, as the fourth one was due to come out, he actually caught sight of the senior officer who they felt was responsible for the location of their mate in the segregation area. Smart. Listen, the, these people are just here for, for your safety or should anything go wrong? Then we drew into the cell stating that uh, we can forget it, they're not going to surrender, we might as well go to bed, they would be there till the morning. We began to get indications that they were going to set fires in the cell. We also detected a deterioration in their speech. But we were concerned that they may have some sort of drugs or the possibility of uh, uh, illicit hooch. I felt at that stage that uh, we would probably move beyond the negotiating stage where they would surrender to uh, requiring to uh, intervene. Control and restraint relies on arm locks, leg locks, wrist locks, and they're designed to immobilize the individual in a way that will not actually break bones or do significant harm to the individual. Do you name it number? Any injuries? No harm. They're being brought out in such a way as they are not able to attack any member of staff, but they are humane techniques which have been approved by the prison service and the Home Secretary as for legal use of force in prison environments. Removals such as this kind rely on a team of three staff removing an individual prisoner. So we had four prisoners, so at least 12 staff would have been used. The intervention plan was implemented at about 20 to 2 in the morning. Oh, all right. Stop swinging up. By uh, 2 o'clock, all four prisoners had been removed from the cells without any injury to uh, staff or the prisoners and relocated to uh, cells in another area of the prison.
So we've got two pieces of evidence. On the incident itself, I put down uh, part of the cause. There was friction reference to movement of the prison the segregation unit. The huge was the deciding factor, I think. They uh, probably, yeah, yeah they, they may have had concerns about it, but that gave them the, the Dutch courage to sort of do yeah, something about they, it. They obviously took that in with them, drunk it, decided to do a bit of a, a, de yeah. a demonstration as such. Yeah. Well, we felt that possibly he had been drinking, which is why the altercation took place in the first place. I checked with Ken when I was kicking up on the centre initially at tea time. There was no evidence of him having any hooch at that time, so he had the hooch afterwards. That's the initial negotiated surrender plan. What intervention, one surrender? Was there? It wasn't reassessed. It we, did, we did reassess it, yeah, because right. in light of the fact there was less prisoners, and originally the plan was long shields, but because of the numbers involved now, they, they reassessed and went to short shield right. and uh, did two practice runs in their legal visits room. Yeah, I've been down and saw those. Yeah. Yeah. Which then um, okay. confirmed that was the right, right decision. Okay. Get back to you as soon as you can, alright? Yeah, no worries. Oh, right, right. Lovely cup. Okay. Right. Yep, I'll get him yeah. over, sir. You ready for the next one? Yeah. One of the difficulties of this job is a continual reduction in the amount of staff actually available for duty. Um, whether it be in the healthcare or, or on the wings, I know the wing staff get very frustrated. Um, and the pressure of work, or works. Um, given to you because there isn't the staff around to complete the tasks. Hello, Gordon, it's Darren. Can you do me a big favour, mate? The bodies for the dentist this morning on A Wing, can you round them up for me and drop them over? A lot of staff don't seem to stay in the job for great lengths of time like they used to. And then we've got lower right eight. I've actually resigned from healthcare, um, sorry to say. Um, through the frustration of the job and one thing or another, and I'm reverting to coming back on a going back on one of the discipline wings. Just yeah, just want, if you don't mind, just want a quick update with all his location because I'll be doing a roll check very shortly. Any bed in any prison, if, if needs be, we have to fill whether there be a patient or um, an inmate from the wings, and if the governor needs a bed overnight for somebody who's not a patient, then we will use that bed. Porch is looking to come out of the wings anyway, but, but there's no spaces over there at the moment. But you need to get rid of him as quickly as you can. We're just going to have to keep on bouncing him back over there, Albert. It's happening more and more often because of the lack of bed spaces in prisons, not just at, at this prison, but throughout the whole country. So that's another space we lost. The only godsend is in the next week or so, we're losing one in five, one in six. Yeah, and they pushed over the weekend with no okay. spaces. Cheers. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, last night was a oh. dodgy one. Yeah. We're going to have to discharge some for the weekend. We've got, no, we got no spaces for the weekend at all, you know that. Extra loads at B&Q means low prices on all gas barbecues just got lower. Save £40 on this. B&Q extra loads on all wood and garden furniture too. Where's the loo? I'm sure it was round here. Catsan absorbs before odour can develop. A fresh idea from Glade. Poo. Good job Mum's got that new thingy to make it smell nice again. Glade Touch and Fresh Bathroom is small and easy to use. Your bathroom stays fresh for hours. Mummy says it's refillable too. New Glade Touch and Fresh Bathroom. Ready? Uh-huh. Toilet duck active liquid with triple action. One to clean, two to freshen, and three with active ingredient Cal X to fight lime scale with every flush. For the one that's three in one, triple action toilet duck active liquid. So, do you want to invite me up for a coffee? 
a little fooling around. Maybe I could spend the night. We could get engaged, married kids. Stop. We've only just met. Keep the change. I prefer things a little slower. Never rushed. Now is the moment. I have a feeling about you. To go inside. I'm doing it on my own. Eight mile. But you just make sure you flip the script tonight. Eight mile. Own the DVD and video from Monday. My wallet. My credit card was in it. You do have a Capital One card, don't you? No. Don't worry. No one's gonna pick it up around here. Whether your card is lost or stolen, with a Capital One No Hassle Platinum card, you're not liable for a penny. Plus, we'll even courier you a replacement card if you're abroad. What's in your wallet? Tell him what I ask him. Yeah, yeah, it's something. Let's bring him in. Really, me? Shots! Knock him back! We still have to work in the same old culture of disbelief. They said if I was a refugee, why are they dressed up in a suit? One of the difficult jobs is to identify them. They feel very disempowered because they don't know the system. I was just moved like a parcel. Inside Britain's asylum system, desperately seeking, 10.30 Tuesday on ITV1. In the mornings, people want to go and have a shower, get on the phone. But because there's only a couple of phones and a couple of showers, they've been stopping the association, saying they ain't got enough officers, blah, blah, blah. So, so but the inmates wasn't having it, really, you know, so right on the yard, they had a sit down. What um, the management decided was that instead of um, getting the inmates out for association, which ties up four or five members of staff, they would give them an extra, um, a, a, an extra period out on the exercise yard, which only ties up two or three members of staff. The inmates quite happily went out at about three o'clock. When it was time for them to come in at four o'clock time, they just refused to come in. Well, we all, all went out, and uh, they opened the gate for us to come in, and, like, nobody went in. And about a couple of minutes later, they come out again, open the gate. Nobody went in again, and that was it. The gate was shut, didn't open again, and it was all like that. In case it is up Do you understand the procedure of adjudications? No. You don't understand the procedure? Adjudication, what's that? Well, adjudication is what you're on now, okay? Yeah. And this form 1145 explains procedure to you. All right. Yeah? Do you understand yeah. what it's all about? Yeah. Okay. What we're doing here today is opening each adjudication on each of the prisoners who took part in the passive demonstration last Saturday. The process is that each of them have been charged with refusing an order to leave the yard. We're doing a total of 60 adjudications resulting from an incident on the yard. So we've got four adjudicating governors doing hourly stints. We've got teams 
of staff available all day to make sure the process is done today within the timescales that we have to do it in. The above prisoner was one of a group of prisoners taking part in the exercise. I unlocked the gate to allow them to leave the yard to return to the wing. At this point there was no attempt by any prisoner to leave the yard. Could you understand the charge? Yeah. Have you made a written response to this? No. And how would you plead? Not uh, guilty. Guilty. Okay, due to the nature of the charge, this will be remanded for independent adjudication and for purposes of investigation. How much English do you understand? I speak just a little bit. Just a little bit. Can you read English? No. So have you not been able to read this? So you don't know what this means? No. Has any member of staff explained to you what it says? Sorry? Has anybody read it for you and spoken to you about what this is? No. Because this process is based in law, he has to have the opportunity to defend himself and he, and he can't do that clearly unless he understands the charge. He's going to be deported anyway. So the other judgment now is actually, is it worth proceeding at all? Because the referral to the independent adjudicator would not necessarily be able to be done that quick. Do you understand what I'm saying to you now? So I just Yeah, okay. All right, take him back to his cell and we'll see what we can do in terms of translation. It might be we'll have to get... It's quite possible they were unwitting participants because of the fact they wouldn't have understood the original order to come in. And not having observed the other prisoners going in, they probably didn't realise the exercise period was finished. So it, there's all sorts of considerations that, that we need to take account of in determining whether we proceed and how we proceed. I was moved to uh, 1545 hours. You disobeyed a lawful order to leave the exercise yard. OK, do you require any help or assistance on this adjudication? Mm, no. And will you be calling any witnesses? Um. Quite possible. I did speak to a number of staff to be asked to be let back in. So, staff witnesses, yeah. Eighty percent of the people wanted to come in, and he was going at the gate asking the officers, and they were saying, "No, I'm not letting you in." And it started raining. They went and got put their coats on with their cups of tea. Other officers walking past saying, them chips was nice, you know, you missed your tea, like winding them up. I think they felt quite simply that, well, we'll stay out here for a couple of hours and then they'll let us back in. By the time it would have got to two hours, it had gone way beyond just letting them off the yard. We had to be sure that we could do that in a controlled and safe and safe manner. We didn't know what their agenda was at that time because they hadn't been uh, talking to us. Next minute you see loads of vans pulling up, the Mucky Squad all coming in. They can spend that sort of money, why can't they spend it like in here? Sorting the place out. Wasting money like that. They'd have just said, you know, everybody wanted to come in, but they wasn't letting them. It was necessary to ensure that I'd got sufficient staff, A, to do the searching, B, to escort them to the cells, and C, to make sure that should they decide to escalate the indiscipline, I was able to control it once they came off the yard. When we felt we were safely in a position to be able to control that number of prisoners, we would bring them off the exercise yard. We would have a list of those prisoners. We would call them forward, identify them, search them, and then escort them up to the cells. The key to the whole thing was, at the end of a six-hour incident, there had been no injuries to staff, no injuries to prisoners, no damage to the fabric of the prison, and uh, there had been no compromise or risk of the security breaches. It was seen that the issue was very much about having their association restricted and consequently having their ability to contact wives, girlfriends and family. And that, that's a lesson perhaps we need to, to learn from. Right then, Paul, what I want to do now, quickly look through that, I'm going to go through the details again, make sure that we've got the facts, what we're going to, what we're going to supply 
to the investigating adjudicators and then just check the details of the prisoners. Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to ship a few out, we want to get them right. We don't want to be sending prisoners away that have got uh, court appearances next week. We've carried out a number of interviews um, over the last few days. Prisoners who have expressed an interest to help the, the establishment, they've said they'll give a statement and they'll be interviewed. And from that, what we're trying to do is identify the ringleaders. Richard? Yeah? Can you... Are you ready for these prisoners? Yeah. I'll give you the details. Right, we've got Delta Foxtrot, 9791. Tell me when you got him up. DF 9791. Okay. He's doing robbery, yeah? That's correct. Delta Foxtrot 7769. Main offence, AVH, was sentenced um, to six months and he's a cat Friday tomorrow. Oh, Friday, yeah. I've got two staff in the afternoon. Yeah. We could get rid of. Take two of those tomorrow, without a doubt. Yeah. In fact, we might have been get rid of the five if we, if we, if we play it right. Yeah. I personally think that he'll go with us to get rid of the five because out of 60, if we've identified five and those are the ones that intimidated all the others to stay on the yard or certainly those five had the major part of it. Yeah. If we get rid of those five throughout the area and split them up, we're yeah. pushing out to the other prisoners that we're not going to tolerate this behaviour. Mm -hmm. We're going now and present it to the governor, right? Yeah. Um, the prisoners know, they, they're saying to us now, you know who they are, because they're, they're talking, they're saying, we've told you, what are you going to do about it? And, and, that's, and that's fair, fair play for them to say that. Mm. In terms of our population management, certainly myself and the Governor had concerns that um, the population mix at the moment, because we've had so many overcrowding drafts in, in excess of 100 prisoners here are, as a result of overcrowding drafts at the moment. Um, whether that is contributing to anything, either from the point of view of the prisoners themselves who are coming in being, you know, having some form of unrest, or because the Gloucester prisoners are feeling uneasy about them being here. Is there any evidence of that in any case? The two assaults we had yesterday weren't linked to that type of incident. They were both locals, weren't they? Both locals. Yeah. Um, South Arms haven't particularly increased. Um, right. GOD's, you know, yeah, the normal run of really place. So we've had no. No indicators, what I would say, to that effect. Mm. I, a little bit of a feeling on the wing is that some of these people, really, if we had the right core of prisoner in, would be nothing. And there's a big London gang that's been caught in the swindle doing whatever, and they're certainly, they could handle themselves, but they yeah. said they're totally at their depth at the moment because they don't know what the population likes here, what the reaction is, what the score is. They've only been here a matter of a few days. Oh. I think they feel probably more comfortable if we <coughs> identified the right people and got them out. Okay. Yeah, that might give us some credibility. Yeah. Okay. I'll speak with the area manager, see what we can arrange, see if we can do something fairly quickly. Well, it didn't really achieve anything, did it? Because we didn't, because nobody thought it was going to go as far as it did. It's, I suppose it all started as a bit of a laugh, like. But uh, if you'd have planned it properly and told them all, I suppose it could have worked different. They would look back at, I suppose, what happened in the exercise yard, ship a few people out, and they'll ghost them out. Um, and nothing would change. There's no life for anybody, you know. So these young kids that are out there on drugs thinking, oh yeah, it's going to be like, oh, we'll only go to prison, you know, or we'll only go to a YO or something. Putting it bluntly and straight to point, it's crap.
Yeah, I've been doing, in and out of prison now for since I was about 26, 27, something. I can't remember actually. Might have been younger. But yeah, it's no life for anybody, you know. For these young kids to start out there on drugs thinking, oh yeah, it's going to be like, oh, we'll only go to prison, you know, we we'll only go to a YO or something. Putting it bluntly and straight to the point, it's crap because they haven't got a life. It just annoys me, really, when people turn around and say it's only this, only a year or something, you know, it's a year of their life. It is hard, prison is harsh, it can be, but once you get used to it, you know, and you're known face in the prison, it becomes easier, so there's no sort of, like, threat to them, so they'll go and do crime and they'll do their drugs and then they'll come into prison because there's nothing to them, they're used to it. Oh, I found out I was ill when I couldn't swallow, I was bringing up blood. The doctor told me it was probably an ulcer. And when I went back two weeks later, he told me I had cancer, which was pretty sort of a bit of a blow. <laughs> if I don't have chemo, I've got 10 months to 12 months to live. If I get, if I have chemo and radiotherapy, I've got three to five years. Uh, sorry, one to three years. And if I have, God, chemo, radiotherapy, and a, and need, an, they want to operate on me as well. If I decide to have the operation, I've got probably about three to five something like that. You know, but that's just a prediction. Most people are wrong with their predictions, so, you know, I live for today. I spoke to Wing staff about him and they say he's very low profile, low key sort of individual. He's on a wing. He's got a long history of heroin addiction. This was uh, an opportunistic theft. He was shoplifting again um, as, a, as a heroin addict to yes, fund his... HTC is home detention curfew, or better known as tagging, where prisoners who have served in under four years are able to be released early, having been assessed that they're not too dangerous for the community and can serve part of their sentence in the community wearing a tag which basically monitors their movements between certain times. HTC was introduced some time ago and fairly recently it was changed to something called presumptive HTC. A criteria now exists where prisoners doing less than 12 months will automatically be considered, providing they haven't committed certain types of violent or sexual offences. All right, we'll start discussing prisoner A at present. He's a presumptive HTC case. He's serving four months for an offence of burglary. He doesn't have I never expected to come here in the first place. You realise what you've what you've got, you know, when when you're missing it, sort of thing. Will you miss your family, work? You don't realise what you've got until it's gone. He's got a bit of an offending history, but there's nothing that excludes him from consideration. He's been no problem since he's been here. He's proposing to go and live with, uh, rejoin his partner, who has uh, is quite happy to have him back. And the outside probation officer check is indicating that that's a suitable address. He's previously had home detention curfew, which he successfully completed. And another positive thing, after a history of road traffic offending, he apparently is now a legal driver. I found it good for myself because, for work reasons, I was still able to get out there and do my work. Even though you're curfewed on the night time, you can still go about your everyday business and get back to living, sort of thing. I think it's quite positive he's actually had uh, HTC successfully in the past. So I think under those circumstances we will be recommending him for release to the Governor. What I'm going to be doing now is actually looking at the assessment of the Home Detention Curfew Board. Uh, we've got Probation Service Risk Assessment in relation to the application. What I'm looking for is a th obviously violent offences, drug offences, and sexual offences, and there's nothing there in this case. Curfew instructions can be at any time, really, um, depending on when the offending took place, so curfews will uh, be imposed around the times when he traditionally goes out and offends, uh, or they may be imposed around times of work so that he can go to work each day, come home, but then will be curfewed for the remainder of the day and the night. Once the recommendation for home detention curfew has been authorised by myself or the governor, the HTC clerk will then notify the private contractor who's responsible for fitting and doing the monitoring of the person that's under curfew. 
prisoner will be discharged in the normal way, as any other prisoner would do without the tag, and he will then be required to go to the nominated address and wait there for the contractor to arrive who will then fit the tag to his leg. This is what you would do when you come in in the morning, isn't it? Come in and switch this on. OK, Oscar 2, I'm going to leave the net, but I'm in the video link should you need me urgently, over. That's received, Oscar 2. Thank you, Ned. Here he comes. See, no. There we are. This is Gloucester's video link court, which will link up with Strode Magistrates Court, serving all of Gloucestershire. And very shortly, Hereford will come online, and that will be followed by Worcester. So this is our courtroom, but it's in a prison. Yeah. Number two, in the chairman of the magistrates. Yeah. The table. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Hi. We've got a lot of people in prison who are have not been sentenced, they've just merely been charged with an offence. But because of the degree of the offence, the magistrates have decided that that person should be kept in custody. With prisoners who've been remanded, they can actually have their appearance dealt with by a video link. It can only be a remand hearing, a prisoner can't be sentenced or anything like that over the link. What's that? That's, that's the one we sat, that's the one defendant for, so that you won't see anything in the court. It's going to cut down on transportation costs to start with. It certainly cuts out the element of escape because prisoners are not going to escape whilst we walk them from the cells to here. No, all right. Can we do it in reverse now, Andrew? And if you put yours on so that you've just got a view of your uh, selves and we'll, we'll dial you up. All right, now go across to S, right down the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I can see that one. <laughs> there we go. So I'll go to S. I'm going to bring that on. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I hope it's still there. Put <laughs> 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 the tea break. <laughs> Hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we did it eventually. <laughs> yeah. Property. Yeah. Keep that for your name and we'll give you on discharge, right? On discharge. You're going to leave with a grand total of £140.67. That's made up of £90.42 of your own money, a £46.75 discharge grant, and £3.50 in bus fares. Can you sign for that, please? Okay. The next thing, the most important thing really is your licences. HTC licences, home detention curfew, okay? <clears throat> Under provisions. Uh, of the section 34A of the Criminal Justice Act 1991, you are being released on licence and you must comply with the conditions of this licence. You'll be subject to a home detention curfew, and the objective of the home detention curfew is to help you manage your return into the community. So you're to remain at that address every day for the period of your home detention curfew, from 6.45 in the evening until 6.45 in the morning. Do you understand that? That means you can't go out of the house, OK? You've signed the curfew licence to say that you understand it, and I will be giving you a copy of it to take with you. Do you understand that? Yeah. By virtue of the length of your sentence, you're banned from anything to do with firearms for a period of five years from today's date. That includes imitation firearms, ammunition, and anything else that might just go back. Do you understand that? Right, that's everything. When the officer's ready, you can go. Okay. Don't forget to make sure you're there this afternoon, all right? Thank you. I think it's a good idea. I mean, obviously, if they've committed a serious crime, they're not going to be giving it anyway, but for petty crime, so to speak, it gives them a chance. I mean, we all make mistakes in our life, and, you know, people have got different views about the law, that people should be sent to prison for this and sent to prison for that and not for that, and I think it's nice that they can be given a chance to come out. from any hearings as a kind of electronic equivalent to an official visit. Your hearing today is taking place over the video link. This does not change the seriousness and importance of the hearing and we will be proceeding as if you're present in the court. You're responsible for maintaining order and control in the court. 
that is your responsibility. And in the court there is an alarm bell. And the way that the court is laid out is that the officer can access the door before the defendant. If you do have an alarm bell down there, get that other door open as quickly as possible because staff won't be able to get in because they don't know the code number. There is a health and right. safety issue there, isn't there? Mm. Of staff not being able to get into that area. You could say that about A-Wing if somebody jammed the locks up. In the normal course of running of events, you can get onto A-Wing, can't you, with well, a key? Not if somebody's jammed the locks up. Not if they barricade it up. Yeah, but the situation as is, people can get into the wing through one of the, in through one of the entrance gates Hopefully, yeah. using a key. Yeah. But we've got a situation down there, whereas the natural course of events means that staff can't get in when that door's shut. Right. Yeah. Can they? They can't get in, though. No. So they haven't, the inmate hasn't got to bother doing any of that. There's an automatic lock on the door that right. means other staff well, can't That's get why in. there are two of you there. Yeah. But if you're both tied up with two inmates, yeah. then you're not going to be able to get to the door. Right. I mean, it's a genuine concern that I think other staff have got as well, that yeah. you're stuck down there with staff that have got no access to you. Give me the answer. Down that door. Give me the answer. Don't give me the problem. Give me the answer as well. The answer is to take the security lock off the door. You can lock it back. Can you? Yeah. Oh, well, we haven't been made aware of that. If we can do that, then that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, no yeah. problem. So don't just provide me with the problem. Give me the answer that goes with it as well, because it does help out. Yeah. Because I don't have all the answers, yeah? Right. Late, Mrs Hay. I apply for the HDC because being in prison, it's hard enough, you know, putting fronts on every day and, do you know what I mean, sort of like not really showing how you feel in, in front of the other guys because they can take advantage of that. If they see somebody weak, they will take advantage of it. I just wanted to sort of like get it sorted out, but outside where I could get more help, you know, and sort of like be around family. Successfully in November last year. The considerations with Mr. Vaughan were a bit more complex than they usually are because of, of the issue of his illness. Uh, what can you tell me about this fellow from the, uh, the wing point of view? Once he was informed of the seriousness of his illness, obviously we, we paid close attention to how he was reacting to that because um, that could send people in different directions. Uh, in Mr. Vaughan's case, we were very impressed at his very mature response, his intentions to, um, it appears, you know, maximise the time that he has left in a, a, a positive way. We set that against his previously poor response in the community and felt that we would be able to support his application, basically because um, of, of the way he'd responded you know, to this very sad news. Well, I'm leaving prison tomorrow. Um, to be honest, I'm scared, you know, because I don't know what life holds for me now. I've, I've got no control at the moment, you know. Not that I'm a control freak, do you understand? I'm not, I haven't got any control over what's going to happen. So it's pretty sort of scary. It's you. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hello? Sometime today? Sorry, mate. Just trying to sort me loud now. My bank has outsourced branch telephony systems into a dedicated call centre. Result? I'm now talking to Vivaldi. Can you play for Chelsea? My bank processes all customer inquiries via an automated voice facility. Nine. I love talking to robots, man. All this faffing around just to get through to me branch. Good job there's another one. See? It's not brain surgery. Does your mobile phone company let you try new services, like picture messaging, before you buy them? You can, with perfect fit price plans from Vodafone. I say, I hear there's 20% off all clothes. Well, that won't leave much to the imagination. <laughs> Tesco, every little helps. Drink new Strawberry Actimel every morning for two weeks and see if you feel the difference. New Strawberry Actimel. Give it a go. Mm, there none. Now is the moment. I have a feeling about you. To go inside. I do it on my own. Eight miles. You just make sure you flip the strip tonight. Eight Mile. Own the DVD and video now. music 
I'm useless. I always get out of breath. It's not fair. I'm always it. The older I get, the more I see it. is a major cause of gum disease. Fortunately, Listerine can reduce the buildup of plaque by half compared to brushing alone. Great news for everybody, except dentists. Listerine, bad for bacteria, good for gums. The Frizz Monster can strike at any time. So try new Sunsilk Frizz Control Cream. Be prepared, tame your frizz. Want help finding a mobile plan that really suits you? Pop into Vodafone and ask about perfect fit price plans. New Shine Temptation Stars lipstick. A supercharged high sparkle finish for your lips. Create some electricity. High voltage colour with Stars Lipstick from Rimmel London. You still have to work in the same old culture of disbelief. They said if I was a refugee, why are they dressed up in a suit? One of the difficult jobs is to identify them. They feel very disempowered because they don't know the system. I was just moved like a puzzle. Inside Britain's asylum system, desperately seeking, 10.30 Tuesday on ITV1. For your information, this here is the clock that your curfew will run by, OK? Yeah. Don't listen to any other clocks in the house. Do you wear a watch? Yeah. Right, what we suggest is you set your watch five minutes faster than what this time says when it's up and running. These two aerials here, the radio aerials, are very sensitive. I know you've got a dog, but he doesn't come in, no, does he? OK. Mess. Kids? Yeah, they won't, they won't mess with OK, right. I heard John say to you about dusting it. Yeah, I can see she's ever so house proud. Please, please don't Stick dust it. Stick it in the corner. That's yeah. it, yeah. yeah. Let it collect dust and afterwards, when you're finished, you can write your name if you want to. Which leg do you want it on? That one. We've already decided. Right, this might take a couple of hairs with it. So, um yeah, on my leg. <laughs> did, it, did it get you? Sorry. <laughs> right, so I'm going to put your PID into test. OK, what will happen then is John will walk around the house with you upstairs. Can you cover all areas of every room you're likely to go into or want to go into during your curfew? If you don't cover it now, what will happen is when you go into that room, it's not calibrated and you'll go absent. Was it by the airing cupboard then? Yeah, I was, yeah. Can you ask him to walk past there a couple of times again, just so I can set it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a full staff meeting in the chapel in the next ten minutes. Nobody knows what it's about. The rumour is the number one might be leaving. The rumours are that the governor's going to leave. But we'll have to speculate as we accumulate. I'm aware of speculation in the prison as regards my position as Governor of Gloucester. I thought it only fair for the first opportunity to inform you of what that position is. I have been offered and have accepted the post of Director of Ashfield Prison, which as you know is, is down the road. I think in the last five or six I years, Mr been. Chalmers is the one, two, three, fourth Governor we've had. And the, the, I, I think the average time for them staying is 18 months. When I've told you, I will tell the area manager that I've told you, he will then release it into the public domain and will then seek expressions of interest from uh, suitable governors within the service um, to, uh, as to their interest in, in coming to Gloucester as governor.
he told us when he first came here that he was going to be here for three years, and, and I thought he would see out the three years. So I, I was a bit disappointed personally that he's leaving. I'm happy to take any questions on. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. This is my buddy. <laughs> no. I don't know what to say about it, actually. It's just a box, isn't it? I mean, what can I say about it? I can tell you what it does. I have this electronic tag on my leg. I can't go out of the house between quarter seven and qu quarter seven at night to quarter seven in the morning. If I want to phone the police, I just press this little number here. And if I want to get in contact with them, I just pick the phone up and press there. And talk to them. They're coming round sometime today to have cut my tag off. It's pretty exciting to actually sort of like for me to have the tag off because it's been part of me for sort of like four weeks, five, well, five weeks, whatever. It doesn't seem a long period of time, but it's long enough, you know. Sometimes forgetting it's there is a bit, can be a bit embarrassing. They're not supposed to be moved at all. You know, you're not supposed to sort of like pick them up or do anything with them like that, or you're not allowed to play with them and move things because it sets the alarm off apparently. My tag's supposed to be finished today, and I've got just only a slight problem, because I, I don't know if you know or not, I've got um, cancer at the moment, and I'm supposed to be going to get my chemo done tomorrow. I've, I'm going back in to have my second lot of chemotherapy tomorrow, and I've, well, I thought they were coming out, this, I was led to believe they were coming out, like, this morning to take my tag off, because I was hoping... I do think being on this, I did actually wish that I was back inside in prison. The reason why I make that comment is, my mates that I miss, because it does get a bit depressing with the chemo gets you down, the mood swings, but it, you know, sometimes I've got my parents to talk to, but there's things you just don't, you can't talk to your parents about. I'm actually writing a letter to the prison governor to see if I can go and visit a friend of mine who, due to my, due to my chemo, might not get a chance to visit him for about two or three months. I'd like to see him as soon as I can, really, because I don't know how the chemo's going to be. Basically, all the governor said was he'd, he'd had a rethink on the situation and he'd decided to, to stay at Gloucester. And, and that was simply it, no reasons or anything. <laughs> Having made the decision to accept the offer to take over the directorship of uh, Ashfield, um, there were one or two things in my own mind that I needed to get answers to in terms of whether I would be given the tools to do the job that I was being asked to, to do. I asked the questions and uh, wasn't entirely satisfied with some of the answers that I would get. I was conscious that I'd made a commitment to the staff at Gloucester that I would be here for a minimum of three years and felt that on balance, you know, not being able to go to Ashfield and probably do the job that I would have wanted to do, um, I, I would probably be happier staying and honouring my commitment to Gloucester and the staff at Gloucester. I think it would be fair to say that he was well liked by all the staff in the prison, or certainly most of the staff in the prison. I'd sooner have the governor here than having a new governor and um, going through all that again. As the saying goes, better the devil you know than the devil you don't, so uh, I think that's the general feeling. It is very, very important for staff to get that level of, of consistency and I think that the Director General made a, an overall commitment that governors would normally be expected to remain in post for, uh, for three years. <laughs> it was actually a far easier decision to make to stay than it was to uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go and see Alan, my friend, in prison. He's a good mate, you know, and it's the first guy I've met that's actually, like, takes me for me and for who I am, not for what he can get off me or what jobs we can do together, you know. He carried me through when I had the cancer diagnosis, so, you know, he's been a very good friend. And it's going to be... I'm excited, actually, in a way, to go and see him, see how he is, see how fat he's got, you know, on this excellent prison food. Have you got anything in your mouth? No, 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 no. 
Thank you. All right. What have you been up to then? Not much really, in the night doing a bit of chemo, you know, just a normal. Yeah? Yeah. I've got a question soon, so it should be all right. Yeah. All right, mate. How are you? All right. Yeah. Safe, Paul. How's it going? All right. What have you been doing? Not much really. He's coming and going. Oh, mental. Look, my hair's dropping out. Is that what you had done? Yeah. It just seems weird being sat in here, you know. I tell you, the weirdest part is when I'm going to be walking out, I'll be sat there going, oh, no, I'll be tears in me. I'll be going, oh, no, I've got to leave Alan in there. Can I take him <laughs> home with me? For a good bit. Yeah, isn't it? Can't he have a day release for a couple of days? Uh, like, oh, Mr Popple's there, do you reckon he'll let her? <laughs> See, I miss those times we have. You're not supposed to enjoy prison, but yeah. I must admit, I quite enjoy I miss you and the rest of the lads, especially you, like, because we used to have a laugh, didn't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's difficult. You know what I'm like for writing? <laughs> I feel pretty positive about like, the future, you know. I suppose, in, in a way, in one respect, I, I, I have to anyway, you know, I can't really sort of like be negative. Because, you know, I have my days of being sort of down and I just try and dig myself out, really. But I'm pretty positive about the future, you know. But like I say, it's one day at a time, isn't it? on cellular confinement. He, um, he went on governor's adjudications on Monday, got seven days cellular confinement, um, refusing to move to A-Wing. No, okay, good on you. What, what's the matter with breakfast? Well, like it. <laughs> right, that's a continental <laughs> breakfast. Not that's not a continental breakfast. Of course it is. Well, Very good. Many for that in hotel abroad. <laughs> what his problem was, was there's a couple of lads over A-Wing that in the past he's had um, a bit of trouble with and he didn't want to go over there. Uh, and he's just making his point, really. You know, he's normally as good as gold. So, you know, he'll do his stay down here. At the end of the day, he'll still have to move to A-Wing, you know. As you can see, uh, Bondi's not one of our more notorious inmates. We had down here. Very, very volatile inmate. And we, we had inklings that he was going to go earlier on that day, and we was a bit wary anyway. Um, he came out, had his shower, uh, everything, and he got a cup of hot water from the from the boiler there. And as we were, it was here, wasn't it, Rod? Yeah. As we, as we were escorting him back to his cell, he, he just no, uh, you know, for no reason at all or anything, just threw this scalding water in Rod's face. Which has made a few improvements, as you can see. <laughs> Seeing you like that reminds me I got chicken for dinner tonight. <laughs> so what's going to happen Friday when you come off then? Uh, sticking back on B-Wing. Sticking back on B-Wing? Yeah. Or do you to move back to A-Wing? Or do you move to A-Wing sometime? Sometime over the... Sometime yeah. over the next few days. Yeah. I'm going to refuse to come back then, you know, get another five days like that. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. You're going to be shit out anyway, aren't you? Of course I am, yeah. yeah. It don't make no difference, do it? You've got to do pre- No matter where you go, you've got to do it, so... Yeah. You know what I mean? How far yeah. can you send me at the end of the day? 
That's the, that's the best bet, really. Yeah. It's a matter of sending you where, where you will accept you and that. I mean, well, that's it, yeah. Like I was just saying, every way it's cool. Well, that's it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. They're going to have to put up with me for now, aren't they? Well, <laughs> the population down here now, I think we've got one space left. Um, it's 26, 26 Rule 45s now, um, one on punishment. We've got room for another three punishments and another one Rule 45. There's been a backlog in the system, not just for vulnerable prisoners, but for the whole prison population. Dartmoor are full, um, Channingswood are full, all the prisons, all the training prisons that we, as a local, send our inmates to, they're all full. Consequently, then, um, you know, the, the locals then become full. Oh, the life is still warm, Bondi. Huh? Still warm. Sure. Huh? Yeah. Suggesting as well, so. <laughs> it was a lovely breakfast, look. Croissant. Nice bit of toast. <laughs> yeah, lovely bit of toast. <laughs> that was as fresh as a daisy, look. <laughs> Looking back, it does feel as though it passed quite quickly, but in reality, I know that it didn't go that quickly. You know, every week you're in there looking forward just seems like an eternity. Even the week before you get released, that seems like it's going on forever. So until you actually walk out that gate, you know, then it hits you that you're out. first two weeks, I think, were quite intense. The things that I noticed in particular were, for example, the smell of cars, the pollution, really hit me because uh, obviously I've not really been in contact with that for nearly three years. Uh, tasting foods, I haven't tasted for years, uh, drinks, obviously sex, <laughs> not having had any of that for three years, that was quite intense. <laughs> being able to walk out the door, that was quite strange, you know, I kept forgetting to lock doors. Um, you know, I go out of the house and leave the door open and stuff like that. It makes you more aware of the effect that uh, you have on other people, uh, family, friends, uh, you know, the consequences of, uh, of your actions. It makes you uh, think about things a lot more in a lot more detail. If I hadn't have been caught, I might well have still been doing it. Anything could happen, I could have been dead. I'd probably have been in it a lot deeper. So, you know, in, in some ways it was a good thing that I was caught at that point. I'd say the memory of prison is still is still there. So it's obviously still having an effect. Um, that probably won't be lost for, well, I suppose forever, really. How are you? Uh, I'll be right. so, I've been coming over here for months, yeah, there's something wrong with my leg. I think mm. it's, the other doctor seems to think I've got a varicose vein in my leg or something. No. He, he, at first he thought it might be um, a cyst or something in my leg, and he gave me okay. two weeks antibiotics, yeah. but they haven't worked. Right, let's have a little look and see what's going on. Can you walk all right? Yeah, but it's, it's something, I don't know, it feels like, you know when you get like a weird pulse in, in, in right. and you feel it pressing like that? Okay. Oh, that? Yeah. Just to help so does, that, does somebody go through that every week then? You should, one, of the, one of those should go down every week. One for the gate, one for the governor, yeah. one for security. Okay. Because they need to know who's coming in. Okay? It's busy. It, it can be stressful at times, obviously, if certain things go wrong. But it, uh, it's quite a happy staff. People, people always seem to get on with it. I mean, there's no friction between staff, we're all sort of happy and enjoy each other's company. I enjoy it. Tomorrow lunchtime will be my last day for two months and in February I'm coming back in for my last three shifts on my last week in service. 
and in February that would be just a couple of months short of 31 years in total. Um, and I've been at Gloucester just over 21 years. Thanks very much. Yeah, that's what we want. Oh, let me put that back in there. You do build up lots of friendships, lots of good camaraderie, and leaving those behind after such a long time won't be easy. Just won't be. That's the thing that I miss. Yeah. Sorry about this. I've been offending since about the age of 11 and uh, started using serious drugs by the age of 12, crack cocaine, heroin by 13. I was in prison two days after my 15th birthday and I haven't spent a birthday or Christmas out since and I'm 23 years old. I'm looking at my like seventh custodial sentence. I come from quite a family of quite one old family and uh, a lot of drugs and crime I was brought up into from a young, young, young age. And it was like, it was just the norm for me. It was just what I knew and what I accepted to be the norm. And I thought it was the norm. And once you get into the cycle and that's your way of life and that's your friends and that's, that's your life and that's just what you do. And you take prison as part of that lifestyle and you, you deal with it, you cope, you do your time, you get out and you do it all over again. Stacking years and years on top of me, it's keeping me off the streets, keeping me, stopping me offending. But only because I'm behind a brick wall, it's not stopping the offending inside of me, is it? It's not stopping the addiction inside of me, because it's still going to be there on release. Good morning, have care. Hey, cheers. Hello, Hannah. Do you want a week? Staffing levels are, are, are at present are set at six. We have six staff on duty for the whole area including um, wing treatments where we have two treatment centres on the wings, one on A and B, one on C wing and the remainder will obviously be in the healthcare. Yeah, Sunday, Sundays you see. With the... the governors and the area manager have both agreed that we are really very much understaffed. We are struggling because what we're not doing is, are the little extras. We're, we're not able to do session work with the inmates, you know, to, to sit and talk to them, anything to, you know, to try and help them. We're just given basic care at present. It's, it's not, the, the little extras are missing. The Kenwood Smoothie Maker, only thirty nine ninety nine. Oh, this is the one I wanted to try. Oh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Does your mobile phone company let you try new services like picture that's messaging before you buy them? Yeah. You can with perfect fit price plans from Vodafone. <laughs>
ground? Uh, it's instant, actually, but it tastes just as good. Oh! <laughs> ground. <laughs> <laughs> down to Summerfield and buy an extra-large beef roasting joint for half price. Chew on that sucker. Weed all kills weeds fast. Want a simple mobile plan that really matches what you need? Thanks, mate. Hop into Vodafone and ask about perfect fit price plans. Whiskers dry with tasty nuggets, crunchy on the outside and deliciously soft inside. Wee! Cats love you, whiskers dry. Cracking down on drug dealing and violent crime, armed police are out in force on the streets of Bristol. Follow officers from Operation Atrium as they prepare to close in on alleged gang members in central Bristol. Addicted to crime. Tuesday, 10.30, ITV1. One up to do lunches. Walked around and he, up one side of the landing and we came back down. Uh, the last cell we got to, we unlocked the door and found uh, one of the patients hanging. Phil was closest to the door, so we was first in. He supported the body. I managed to get the ligature undone. We laid the body on the bed. The doctor went in the cell, and really the staff worked very, very hard. They'd done just about everything they could to try and resuscitate Richard. By the time the ambulance arrived and the paramedics got up to the cell, the doctor then had said, I think we better stop. Um, I, I, I'm going to pronounce a, a time of death. He stated he felt a bit low. He didn't say anything about actually harming himself or attempting suicide. He was placed on uh, what we, it's a Form 2052SH, which is a special watch for people who are felt to be at risk of either self-harm or attempt suicide. But he had actually expressed that there was no, no way that he was going to do anything silly. The only thing he would do was to starve himself until he got a transfer back to Wales. And that was all he, that was the only thing he said that he would do was it was wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink until he got his own way. On the Monday then they came out to tell me that Richard had died. It was out, it was a, a dreadful shock because I assumed he was still in Cardiff. Apparently he did give some vital information, and that was apparently the reason they felt he should be transferred. But personally, I think um, he was doing them a favour, really. And he was, I feel he was punished for it. I can't help feeling that it wasn't fair for him to be the one to be transferred. I wasn't even told that he was being transferred. No one phoned to tell me that he was up in Gloucester. So it was quite a shock to discover that he, he had lost his life in Gloucester. I'm confident that Richard would not have taken his own life had he not been transferred. And I think he was telling the prison service, if you don't get me home, then I'm gonna, I don't want to be around. I've had six children, five boys and one girl. Sadly, three took their own lives. It's very hard to believe that can happen to somebody, isn't it? 
It doesn't bear thinking about, really, does it, to lose you? Sit down and think, well, like, where's my Paul? Where's my Gareth gone? I know it should have gone. I think it's a smashing photo, then. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? I shall treasure this one, because it's the only thing I've got left of him, really, now. It, his whole face was lit up with a smile. He did have a, a love, and I shall always remember him for a smile. I think I'll picture him, picture that smile always. I just hope, I really hope, that he had a, that that he that he was thinking of me, that that he had a picture of me, and a picture of his family before he, he went. I really hope he was sitting there and thinking, "Mom, I love you, I love you all, and I don't want to leave you." But he couldn't have been thinking that, and I'm sure he wouldn't have left us. And I do, I miss him, miss him. Terribly. And I write him time and time again to his print names and then if you want Off the top of my head there was uh, one who stated he swallowed four razor blades yeah. and then another inmate who swallowed two and then swallowed another totally into yeah. eleven. So there was two inmates who swallowed razor blades the same weekend. Do we class that self harm too? That would have been self harm, so yeah. And they would have been on last month's figures. I mean, obviously, the most significant event was the 4th of December. I was actually in healthcare at the time, so I saw the, the level of response and the speed of response from, uh, uh, from everybody there, and it, it was magnificent. I can't see that, you know, I've been thought it through a number of times, anything that we didn't do that, had we done it, would have made any difference, or anything we did do, that would have made any difference. It, it, it happened. On a personal basis, as one of the senior governors in the prison, the first thing you say is, what could we have done to have stopped it? Did we do something wrong? Have we failed in some respect? And I'm sure every single member of staff involved in the process from when he was received on the Thursday night through to the time when he was found hanging have asked themselves the same question. It was a prisoner we didn't know, and I think it was just a combination of events that, uh, that led to it, unfortunately. Richard was new to Gloucester Prison, um, and we were still in the process of getting to know him, knowing what the problems were that were making him feel in the way that he was, and uh, trying to deal with those you know, before he actually did what he did. I had a telephone call from the governor of Cardiff, which is where Richard Jones would normally have gone, you know, apologising for what had happened to us, feeling that it, it should have been them that was dealing with it, you know, but actually, you know, I was quite comfortable with the fact that had he gone back to Cardiff, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened. The inquest will determine what was the cause of death, the circumstances around the death, um, whether it was felt they intended to do it or whether it was misadventure which was accidental so that was he may have been attempting self-harm uh, which tragically went too far <coughs> well, I'm not very happy about it all to be honest with us there was no need for a shit to die, really. It was totally unnecessary. I don't think Gloss are partly to blame. Um, I think they did their job. I mean, they've got to do their job, they? but uh, there's a lot of things that need to be changed. Need to be put in a safe, safe cell where they can't harm themselves, where they can be watched, cameras, monitored regular. There'll always be in fear this will happen to another young, young lad. Another young boy, a mother will go through exactly what I'm going through again. I'm convinced of it. If they don't do something now, I'll always have that terrible pain there. It'll never ever go away. And every, every time I see something about prison, it'll always be there. Uh, 
Uh, well, today is um, end of an era for me. 31 years in prison service, finishes today at lunchtime. Um, I would go into retirement, put out the grass, so to speak. All the best to you. You take it easy now. Don't I always? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you. Yeah. See you yeah. What I've ever seen you again. <laughs> Very mixed emotions. There are parts of me that say, yes, uh, you're going to be away from the stress of the job, the, the problems that arise. But the camaraderie and the staff, friendship, uh, and, and within the healthcare, it's almost like a love for each other. Um, that really is going to be very sorely missed by me. I've had 22 years at, at HMP Gloucester out of the 31. And it's difficult because you build up so many close friendships. But it will be very difficult. Walking out of the door for the last time at lunchtime is going to seem quite strange. All the other times you walk out the door, you're going to come back. This time you're walking out, you're not coming back. It's, it's goodbye. <laughs> No, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. but we we'll, we'll, we'll want this touch for the week. Come see you, lads. Best day of the week. It's a bad, bad air day. <laughs> right, you've got nine golden virgins. Correct? Yeah. Correct. You've got two Hamlet cigars. Two Swan filters. Yeah. Check. Two Twixes. Check. One two Maltesers. Me. Check. All done, Tom. All part of the service, lot. I only go and look at the envelope to know that you want to go that spot. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see the rest of it? Oh. <laughs> Dear Governor, me and Buster want to go to the Grand Prix, P R W E, next year. I said to Tim, if I ask for it, shall I? If I ask Mr. Popple that, shall I spin some yarn about going to Florida, or shall I tell him the truth? And Tim says, spin a yarn. So I said, no, I can't do that. I'd tell the truth. I've known you too long to lie to you, sir. Can I? Yeah, it wouldn't make any difference anyway. No. No. You'd still say no, wouldn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I don't say no, sir. Please, on telly, please don't. Depends how good the tea is and when it turns up. Hey, Jerry. Paul, can I have a cup of tea, no sugar for the governor, please? It's for the it's for the good governor. It's for the nice one. Regrets, I've had a few, and this is one of them, and there again, too few to mention, I did what I had to do, and saw it through, without exemption, I've planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway, and more. Much more than this, I did it my way. Oh, more, much more than this, I did it my way. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.